Uh, my understanding uh, is Ham Hamilton Bledsoe. Hamilton Chris Christian Bledsoe. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, is Mr. Bledsoe here? Yes, I believe he's under Hamilton's iPhone. Okay. Mr. Bledsoe, if you could unmute and show your face, please. Yes, I'm here. I was trying to figure it out. All right. So, Mr. Bledsoe, you're here represented by Mr. White of the law firm of Lister Holton Dennis. This is case 2021CR05317. Who's representing the state on this motion for a uh, motion to suppress? You know, and I'll be representing the state. Okay. So, the uh, assistant solicitor, uh, Mr. Van Dyke Kotoroka Yedam, is representing the state. Um, Mr. White, uh, what is the uh, defense challenging in this case? Your Honor, we're challenging two things. We're challenging um, the field sobriety test as well as the implied consent, Your Honor. All right. So this is the matter of the state of Georgia versus Hamilton Christian Bledsoe 2021 CR 05317. This is a motion brought by uh, on behalf of Mr. Bledsoe. Um, attorney uh, Justin White of the law firm of Lister Holt Dennis is representing Mr. Bledsoe. This is a motion to suppress regarding uh, field sobriety exercises and implied consent. Um, the motion has been particularized, and with that respect, Mr. Um, Van Dyke Kotoroka Yidam is representing the state, um, and we are ready to go forward, Mr. Um, Kotoroka Yidam. Gianna, um, this is the state motion, and um, would I just state to move forward um, if the state may? I'm sorry? Jana, I said um, this is the state's motion. You're the state, Mr. Um, Kotroka. Oh, sorry. Um, that is the defendant's motion, Your Honor. Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, White, did you have any opening in this case? No, Your Honor. No opening. All right. Did the state have any opening in this case? No, Your Honor. All right. So the state um, should put up its its witnesses. Am I correct or am I mixing this up? Because uh, that's my understanding. Yeah, y'all aren't sounding like we know how this is supposed to go. Immunity motions, the defense carries the uh, burden, however uh, slight. Um, but on um, a regular motion to suppress, the state carries the burden. Your Honor, the, the state will call Officer Watts. That's the, uh, the state first witness. Officer Watts? What? Ward, okay. All right, so um, Officer Ward, raise your right hand for me. You solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you give in this matter will be true. Yes, ma'am. All right, um, your witness, Mr. Kotoroka, you, you know. Please state your full name. Mercedes Ward, M-E-R-C-E-D-E-Z-W-A-R-D. -E -E and now, uh, where are you employed? Clayton County Police Department. How long have you been employed with them? About seven years. Do you have any law enforcement experience before joining Clayton County? No. Do you successfully complete any mandatory training? Any mandated training? Yes. Yes, I attended the um, Clayton County Regional Academy, basic law enforcement academy. When did this happen? Um, November 2016 to March of 2017. Are you are you are you required to complete um certain number of training um to keep your certification update? Yes. Have you done that? Yes. Have you been trained in detection of a person under influence of alcohol? 
Yes, I've been trained in impaired driving. The judge um, briefly about this. Uh, I took a 24, I believe, 24 hour class for standardized field sobriety uh, when I was in the academy. I took a 16 hour course for uh, Intoxer 9000 operation. Uh, I took um, a another, I believe it's 16 or 24 hour course for um, advanced roadside impaired driving. Um, I took, uh, I believe it's a 40 hour course for standardized field sobriety instructor. I took a 40 hour course for um, drug identification. And uh, I, throughout the years, I've taken several refreshers for the intox operator and standardized SFST refreshers. Thank you, Officer Wolf. Um, have you done any um, DUI arrest? Yes. Approximately how many have you made? Uh, approximately 170. And did you use your training to affect this arrest? Yes. Okay. So um, I would like to draw your attention to um, this case um, that occurred on March the 20th, 2021. Um, were you employed on this day? Yes. With Clayton County? Yes. Um, were you post certified on this day? Yes. Um, were you on duty uh, in uniform and in mark police vehicle? Yes. Um, what, what, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? You broke up. I'm sorry, I'll repeat that. Um, what was your duty that evening? What was my duty that evening to yes. respond to 911 calls? Did you recall, uh, making contact with Mr. Uh, um, Hamilton Blesto? Yes. And when you made, what was the time that you made this contact? You said, what was the time? Yes. I can't recall the actual time. I want to say it was around, uh, it was in the evening, maybe around 9 or 10 p.m. And what was the weather condition like at the time? Um, from my recollection, it was dry. Where were you located when you arrived at the scene? Um, I believe I was in the area of Terra Boulevard and Highway 138. How did this initial contact occur with the defendant? Um, one of my uh, superior officers had, um, a, uh, excuse me, approached a vehicle accident involving the defendant in another vehicle and requested assistance, which I came out and assisted with. And was this in Clayton County? Yes. So I want to talk to you um, about the, you know, how you witnessed the driving, um, the the um, the accident. Did you have any concern with the driver when you initially um, appeared on the scene? Did I have any contact with the driver? Uh, did you have any concern? Concerns. I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Did I have any con concern? Did you were you concerned in any way? About What's your contact with the driver? Yes, uh, at, at a certain point during my encounter with the defendant, I was concerned with his um, level of impairment. Did you develop any um, suspicion based on it on the, on his driving? N not on his driving. No, I didn't see him operating the vehicle. Uh, another officer observed him operating the vehicle. So basically, you did not do the traffic stop. It wasn't a traffic. It wasn't a traffic stop. He um, struck the rear end of another vehicle and caused the accident. Okay. So, what did you first do when you encountered the defendant? I spoke to both parties involved to ascertain what happened and how the collision occurred to conduct my accident investigation. Um, do you see him? Uh, do you see the defendant in the courtroom today? Uh, I believe that's the one named Hamilton Blitzo with the black suit and black tie. Thank you. Um, 
I just want to ask a little bit about your observation at that night. Um, what was your observation about the defendant that night? From my recollection, I recall the defendant um, smelled strongly of alcohol, which would initially um, develop my suspicion that he might be impaired. Um, throughout my encounter with him, I noticed that he had some indicators in his speech that were consistent with slurred speech. Um, and he was just giving me indicators that he was possibly impaired. Did you ask the defendant whether he has been drinking that now? Yes. And what, what was his response? Um, I can't recall. I don't have my report in front of me. I would have to refresh my recollection. Is there a way? Can I pull it up? Yes. Let's see if I can find it. Yes, sir. He, he admitted to having uh, some drinks. "Quote unquote drinks." Um, did 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 he ever change his answer from what in, he initially gave you? So what? Can you I don't. Him? Yes, sir. I don't. I don't have any recollection of him changing his answer. Um, he might have specified that he had two two to three alcoholic beverages at his friend's house. And um, based on what what you you know you saw so far at that time, did you feel the need to further investigate? Yes, sir. Okay. So, what was your next step in the evaluation process? I asked if he would voluntarily um, allow me to check his eyes to determine if he had any clues of impairment. He agreed. Um, and while doing those uh, evaluations, I saw clues of impairment on HGN, walk and turn, and the one leg stand. Can you um, explain a little bit about what HGN means to the court? Yes, HGN uh, means horizontal gaze and nystagmus. It's an evaluation that we do with the eyes. Um, and what we are looking for is involuntary jerking of the eyes as we move a stimulus to the side, from side to side. Um, did you have to need a medical degree to observe the stagnamus? No. Okay. And why not? Uh, this is just something that you can see with the naked eye. You don't need a, a degree or any kind of medical license to see this. And can um, someone who is inebriated uh, practice this evaluation? Someone who is inebriated practice the evaluation? Yes. They can perform the evaluation, yes. So what, what specific clues did you pick up when you performed this evaluation? Uh, from my recollection, um, the defendant displayed all six uh, clues of HGN, which is lack of smooth pursuit, distinctive sustained nystagmus at maximum deviation, and onset of nystagmus at prior to 45 degrees. So um, be before you did the test, what was the instruction you thought you gave the defendant? Um, to gaze at the stimulus that was in front of his face, approximately 12 to 15 inches, and follow it, follow it with his eyes and without moving his head, which he understood that he, uh, under, which he acknowledged that he understood. Did you ask the defendant how he, he wore contact glasses? Did I ask the defendant? Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. I can't uh, recall. Uh, that's a standard question that we should ask. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, did you medically clear defendant to perform the test? Um, yes, I conducted the medical qualifiers. How do you do this? Check for arrest and nystagmus, which he did not have. I made sure his pupils were equal in size, which they were. And I made sure his eyes tracked equally. Okay. So what did you observe, you know, during this performance? During this performance, I, I observed nystagmus in his eyes. Um, his eyes failed to lap, failed to track uh, smoothly during the first clue. There was distinct nystagmus in his eyes at maximum deviation. 
and he had nystagmus in his eyes prior to 45 degrees. So do you record the clues that you picked up during the process, during the test? Yes, sir, it were those three clues. Okay. And at the minimum, what would that indicate? At the minimum? Yes. Per NHTSA? Okay. At at least a point zero one. Did you happen to do um, a walk around test? A walk and turn test, yes, sir. Yeah, yes. yes can, sir. You do, can you describe that? I um, asked the defendant to stand on um, um, a line and conduct nine heel to toe steps. On his knife step, he was instructed to keep his lead or his front foot on the line, take a series of small steps to turn around and do nine nine heel to toe steps back. So what, what clues did you pick from um, this performance test? There was a total of eight uh, clues of impairment. Uh, the defendant displayed five of those. And uh, how does this relate to the driving, the clues that you picked up. How does this relate to driving? Well, this uh, evaluation is called a attention divided test. So the theory behind this is that the subject is given a physical task and a mental task. They're given instructions. Uh, they're supposed to remember those instructions and they're supposed to perform the physical task. The theory behind it is that if they can't perform a simple task as a walk and turn test, um, how can they operate a vehicle safely? Um, was there any issue with the area or was this test performed um, well by the defendant? This test was performing, I believe it was the CVS parking lot in this area. How many clues did you pick up on this on this particular test? Five out of the eight. Okay. And uh, what was um, defendant's performance indicative of? What was his performance was indicative of impairment of alcohol. John, no, no further questions. What did Officer Ward? All right, cross examination, Mr. White. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, good afternoon, Officer Ward. Hey, good morning, sir. Um, <clears throat> So, Officer Ward, when you were um, interacting with Mr. Blesso, did you have a body camera on? Yes, sir. Officer Ward, how does your body camera operate? You turn it on and it starts recording about like a 180 degree angle of everything that's in front of me. And do you have access to your body camera after you turn it in? You don't turn it in. We, we keep them. You but yes, them. we have access to them. Do you guys um do anything to uh, change the body camera footage in any way? We don't have access to that. Your Honor, may I share my screen to uh, show um, Officer Ward a sample of the video? Okay. Officer Ward, do you see my screen right now? Yes, sir. Officer Ward, I'm about to play a snippet of this video. Um, can you just tell me if you recognize it or not? Okay. This is me. Officer conducting. Ward. Yes, sir. Do you recognize this video? Yes, sir. This is me conducted a, the accident investigation and gathering the information of both vehicles involved. Does this video appear to be altered in any way? No, sir. I'm, I haven't seen the rest of the video, but it doesn't appear to be altered. You know, at this time, we would like to enter in Officer Ward's body camera video, uh, video one as defense exhibit number one. Any objection, Mr. Kotoroka, Ian? No, Your Honor. 
Okay. All right. Defensive exhibit number one will be admitted without objection. It's the body camera video of Officer Ward. And Your Honor, I'm going to start the video at um, around 19 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. I can get to it. And I re into him. Can you guys hear the video now? Okay. I can hear it now. I tell you, I hit him. I re into him from the back. Okay. But I it, did. But again, if there's any kind of suspicion that you are impaired, I'm not saying drunk, I'm not saying belligerent. If you're impaired by alcohol, I have to dispel that concern. Okay. I have to do a series of evaluations to make sure that you're not drunk. Because now, you know, today it didn't result in injuries, but next time it may result in fatalities. Would you yes. not listen? Would you I, not want I me to use this point. correct procedure if you or your family got hit by a drunk, possible I, drunk driver? I, I, yes, uh, so I got I got to do my job, right? No, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma All right. So the other evaluation is a walk and turn test. Do you have any issues with your legs from walking a straight line? I have one. Well, and this is going to sound like a cop out. My knee and my ankle was messed up. And it happened to me walking. Okay. Um, Did it prevent you from walking a straight line? I'm hitting the code. It might. And I'm not saying that as that's what I'm saying. I don't want you to get a cop out. Okay. So I need you just to understand my knee and my ankle was messed up. Okay. So can you do it? I will try. Okay. All right. So let's let me find a line over here. Let's go to the line behind, behind my car. You see those little part of. Uh, Parking lines? That white solid one? And again, like I said, a kidney code. My knee and my ankle. My wife is right there. All right, so you see this line right here? Yes, ma'am. You want to do with your flip flops on or off? I mean, whatever. Okay. 47 go. Negative, I'm on the 30. All right, do me a favor, put your left foot on the line, just like this. All right, put your right foot in front, touch your heel to toe. All right, keep your arms out to your side. Now hold this position until you, you will start, okay? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna start off like that. All right, you're gonna take nine heel to toe steps, okay? So you're gonna go one, two, three, but you're going nine, okay? You're gonna keep your lead foot on the line, take a series of small steps to turn around and do nine heel to toe steps just like this with your arms out to your sides. I'm gonna say this. I am saying this just, I do have an injury. Do you want to do it's it? To my left leg. No, I will do whatever you want. But I'm saying, because I, I'm not drunk. So, I'm telling you, I do have a left leg injury. Okay. All right. So, the instructions, do you want me to demonstrate it again? No. Okay. I, 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 I got what you're saying. Okay, so during, I'm, I'm, yes, so during the evaluation, I want you to look down at your feet so you don't trip. And Your Honor, just for the record, I am stopping the video at 22 minutes and 11 seconds. Right. Go ahead, Mr. White. So, Officer Ward, you had, before conducting the walk and turn test, you had talked to Mr. Blesso and you had stated that as part of your job, you were required to do these evaluations. Is that correct? As part of my job, I was required to do the evaluations if there was some suspicion that he was impaired. Okay. And at some point, you also mentioned that you also told Mr. Blesso that um, if you had gone into a hypothetical that if he had had um, people on the road and uh, somebody was drunk on the road, that would he not want somebody to do these evaluations to make sure somebody was safe to drive? Is that also correct? Yes, sir. I wanted to make sure that he understood that we do our, our job thoroughly, regardless if there's injuries or no injuries involved. And after the and after you conducted those evaluations with Mr. Blesso, you did, in fact, place him under arrest. Yes, sir. And did you at that point read him implied consent? Yes, sir. And at that after that, he was taken to the jail. Is that correct? 
after completing paperwork, yes, he was taken to the jail. And before his blood was drawn, did Mr. Bledsoe indicate any um, aversion to getting his blood drawn? Um, I don't recall at this point. I'm trying to find it in the report. I have no recollection of it. To um, I could show if. Do you need me to refresh your recollection? I could show you in the report where I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Please, Your Honor, may I share my screen again? You may. Officer War, can you see my screen? Yes. Do you see the second paragraph after the um? titled post arrest yes could you silently read that paragraph uh to yourself and let me know when you're done Yes, sir. Um, do you remember any um, aversion um, Mr. Blesso had to taking the blood to um, having his blood drawn? So initially on scene, when I read him in plaque consent, he agreed. Um, upon getting to the jail and sitting in the nurse's chair for the blood draw, he advised that his lawyer had, um, I guess, suggested to him that he should not take the test. Um, at that point, if he didn't want to comply, it would be considered a refusal. However, I wanted to give him another opportunity. So I read him in plot consent a second time. And at the end of reading the second time, he again requested his uh, lawyer. At that point, I don't, he's in the jail. I don't have any um, say so as far as what phone calls he could make. And I advised him that I couldn't allow him to speak to an attorney at this point. But he eventually consented and allowed the nurse to draw his blood. And Officer War, was that conversation uh, captured on your body camera? I, I, I'm i not sure. If I were to show you a video, um, would you be able to potentially recognize it? Yes. Your Honor, may I share my screen once again? You may. That's why wow. Officer Ward, do you recognize that video? Yes, sir. This is the uh, intake area for Clay County Jail. And do you know uh, whose video this is? Yes, this is my body camera. Okay. And does it appear to be altered in any way? Um, the video is, is chopped into smaller videos. This is not initially where the video started, but other than that, I don't see any alterations. Your Honor, at this time, I would like to um, introduce Officer Ward's uh, second body camera video as defense's exhibit number two. So are there actually two videos or is it just one that you've truncated at this point? I received two videos from the state and this is the second video, Your Honor. Okay. So um, defense exhibit two is the second body cam video. Any yes, objection, Mr. Kotoroka Yira? No, Your Honor. All right, so that will be admitted without objection. All right, thanks, Mr. White. Go ahead. Your Honor, um, just for the record, I'm going to be starting the video at, oh, I'll try to be starting the video at 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Well, as close as possible, as close. Yeah, I got you.
just once again to check, can you guys hear the audio? Yes, sir. What's going on? No, when I read you that green card mm -hmm. and I, I advised you of the circumstances behind it and no, the penalty for refusing. When I get the call, let me call. Do you want me to read you the let me read it to you again so you can give me a yes or no? I'm saying I was told to not to do it. Who was told by who? Is that whose advice you're taking? I mean, you want me to read you this card again? Reading. All right. In block is set for people 21 and over. The state of Georgia has conditioned your privilege to drive upon the highways of the state, upon your submission to the state, administer chemical tests on your blood, breath, urine, or other bodily substances, for the purpose of determining if you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. If you refuse this testing, your Georgia driver's license or privilege to drive on the highways of the state will be suspended for a minimum period of one year. Your refusal to submit to blood or urine testing may be offered into evidence to get you at trial. If you submit to the testing and the results indicate an alcohol concentration of 0 0.8 grams or more, your Georgia driver's license or privilege to drive on the highways of the state may be suspended for a minimum period of one year. After first submitting to the request of state test, you are entitled to additional chemical tests of your blood, birth, urine, or other bodily substances at your own expense from a qualified person of your own choosing. Will you submit to the state and administer chemical tests of your blood? No, sir. I just need yes or no right now. She's waiting. I'm waiting. I need to speak to my attorney. Okay, you can, you can speak to your attorney after. I just advise you of everything on the card. Right, but I'm saying I would definitely advise the advice of counsel. Okay, so, so and, 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 if you can't give me an answer now, it's going to be considered a refusal. Why? Because you can't give me an answer. I can't wait here all day for you to contact your attorney. I know. I mean, if we go out there. I can call them. It doesn't work like that. I can't just give you a phone and tell you to call your attorney. You have to have a process to get booked in in order to make phone calls first, and that takes a few hours. So if I do the blood test, I go home? If you do the blood test, you go home. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not understanding what question you're telling me. No, I'm saying. I'm if, you blood blood test, if you do the blood test, if you, I can't. I'm not going to coerce you into doing something you don't want to do. But if right. you take the blood test, you will get your license back. Your license is with your property. If you don't do the blood test, then I'm taking your license and suspending it. So you cannot drive for a year. That's the penalty. When do I get to speak to my counsel to see that I still shouldn't do I don't know when you can speak to them. I'm I'm here trying to get the blood. That's it. So, okay. I'm not telling you that. You know, I've been messing with the client. So what I'm saying, can we go out there and speak to someone and ask if I can make a phone call to see that I should or should not? You can't make a phone call right now. You have to get booked in before you can make personal phone calls. That takes a few hours. So if I submit to the blood test and someone there to pick me up, I can go home? Yes. <clears throat> so you're going to go through with it? That's between your attorney and the prosecutor. So then I get to talk to my attorney. Yeah, I mean, of course you get to talk to your attorney when you're outside of jail, but we can't give everyone their phone call. outside of jail. Yeah. So I get to go home if I do this. You get to go home or oh, yeah. I don't know why they... No, no. And your honor, for the record, I'm stopping the video at 14 minutes and 25 seconds. Yeah, got it. So, Officer Ward, when you were talking with Mr. Blesso, he had asked that if he were to submit to the blood test, he wanted to know if he was get his license back. Is that correct? Um, I'm not sure which how he worded the question, but he did inquire about his license. And you uh, responded by saying that 
if he were to take the test, he would receive his license back. Yeah, but that was in relation to at that time. Um, he asked me about what would happen after the, I guess, the blood results return. And that's when I if informed him that that would be between his attorney and the, the prosecutor. And officer, is it also true that if the blood results were to come back above a 0 0.008, even if he submitted to the blood test, that his license could still be taken? Correct. And also later on, Mr. Bledsoe asked, uh, he asked twice actually that if he were to submit to the blood test, he would get to go home. Is that correct? I heard him one time, but um, I would have to re-listen again. Um, I was trying to explain to him that the penalty for refusing was the suspended license. And that's why I attempted to read it more than twice. Um, we're generally not required to answer any further questions that uh, an arrested offender may have about implied consent because these uh, questions could arise. And at the end of the day, we don't want to coerce anyone into doing something they don't want to do. But you do remember him asking once if he took the blood test, he would get to go home. Is that correct? Yes. And did you, you told him that he would get to go home if he took the blood test? I told him he would get to go home. Yes. Your Honor, I have no further questions at this time. Mr. Kotoroka, hear him? Ms. Waltz. Uh, sorry, Officer Waltz. Yes, sir. Uh, usually, what is the procedure uh, for booking a defendant in when they are first arrested? The What is the procedure for booking an offender in after they're arrested? Yes. We take them to the Clayton County Jail. They're searched. Um, sometimes they're changed into different clothes. Um, their information is entered into the system. They see a nurse. Um, they see a clerk advise them of their charges and how much they need to bond out, things of that nature. Do, the, um, do they usually send you yeah clothes if they happen to um leave the jail if you know they they, they check in and have to leave born out do they have to change their clothes do they have to change their clothes no in in this instance um do you recall the reason why um mr blesto changes clothes that his clothes was changed i cannot recall the reason why And usually when an inmate is booked in, um, for how long do they get to make a phone call? It what, is, what is the procedure? Um, the procedure is that they have to be issued a wristband in order to use that code on the wristband to make phone calls. Um, that procedure can take up to hours depending on how busy they are. Um, and that has no that has nothing to do with the Clayton County Police Department. That's operations of the Sheriff's Department. So I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how long that took him for to get a phone call. And um, did you make this known to the defendant when he requested his attorney? Yes. Your Honor, no further questions. All right. Any redirect, Mr. White? I mean, recross, Mr. White? Yes, just very briefly. Officer Ward, when somebody is arrested and then they are booked in, are they typically immediately released or are they forced to bond themselves out? They're not immediately released. So they're um, forced to either conduct a signature bond or, yes, bond or bail themselves out. Your Honor, I have no further questions. All right. All right. Anything else for um, Officer Ward? Your Honor, no further questions for Officer Ward. All right, Officer Ward is free to go at this time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Sorry about that. All right, does the state have another witness to call? No, Your Honor. All right, state rest. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. White, do you have any um, witnesses or evidence to present on behalf of Mr. Bledsoe? No, Your Honor, the defense rests. All right, argument. 
And Your Honor, would you like the defense to argue first? If you want to. Your Honor, starting with the argument against the field sobriety tests, um, these the argument against the field sobriety test is not one that is situated on the fact that the field sobriety tests were not properly done, but on the fact that Mr. Bledsoe did not freely and voluntarily um, consent to the field sobriety test as um, required under the Amon v. State case. And Your Honor, if you give me just a moment, I'll get you the exact site on that case. And Your Honor, that site is 315 Georgia 149. And Your Honor, under Amons, they uh, concluded that one cannot be compelled to do field sobriety tests as they are protected under paragraph 16 of the Georgia Constitution self-incrimination clause. Um, Your Honor, in this case, before Mr. Bledsoe um, did the walk and turn and the one leg stand, he had a conversation with the officer about the test. During that conversation, Officer Ward uh, told Mr. Bledsoe that as a requirement of her job, and in fact, she reiterated this point on a cross-examination that she was required to do these evaluations and that she had to do these evaluations, even going on to further talk with Mr. Bledsoe, um, saying that, um, would you want somebody, would you want me to not do these evaluations if you had a loved one on the uh, road and somebody was driving drunk? Based on that, and also based on another comment later on said by Mr. Bledsoe before taking the walk and turn, where he specifically said, I'll do whatever you want. Based on that, the conversations told by Officer Ward and based on, as we can see from Mr. Bledsoe's understanding, Mr. Bledsoe understood that he is required to do these evaluations, despite the fact that one person cannot be compelled to do those evaluations. And due to the fact that Officer Ward said they were required, it would be the defense's argument that that is basically compelling him to do so as he did not give him a chance to um, not do the evaluations and did not correct him when Mr. Bledsoe indicated that it was his understanding that he had to do them. And so, Your Honor, based on that, we would ask that the walk and turn and the one leg stand examinations as that conversation happened only before those examinations and not the HGN evaluations, that those evaluations be suppressed, Your Honor. Your Honor, moving on to the implied consent evaluation, um, under Williams v. State, that's 296 Georgia 817, the Georgia Supreme Court concluded that when looking at whether or not one gives consent uh, to a warrantless blood test, that they must look at the totality of the circumstances. Um, Going forward, the courts have um, given a few indication as to what those things that the court should look at. However, they do not limit the court to looking at these things, those things being age, education, capacity, the nature of questioning, and any threats employed. And, Your Honor, that comes from Blazek v. State 364, Georgia App 128. Of course, however, the state, the court is allowed to look at other factors as well that they deem appropriate. Your Honor, in Holland v. State, that was 346, 347, I'm sorry, Georgia App 601, the um, appeals court actually remanded um, the case to the trial court based on the fact that they had concluded that the officer had made some misleading statements to the defendant. And due to those, and since the court had not considered those misleading statements, that of course it had to be remanded. Um, Your Honor, in this case, it is the defense's argument that Officer Ward made misleading statements to Mr. Bledsoe. The first being when he asked if he were to take the blood test back, would he get his license back? And Officer Ward um, answered in the affirmative. However, despite her even admitting on cross, that if his blood became back above the legal limit, that his license could be taken away anyway. Going for, further, Your Honor, Mr. Bledsoe asked twice, um, if he were to take the blood test, would he be allowed to go home? And times Officer Ward said that, yes, he would be allowed to go home, despite the fact that in order for him to actually go home, he would need to be processed, 
transfer to the Clayton County Jail and then receive a bond in which he would have to bond out. It would not be an immediate thing. And Your Honor, when you're looking at the totality of the circumstances, based on the earlier conversations Mr. Bledsoe had with the officer, plus the misleading information that officer told him, combined with the fact that Mr. Bledsoe was clearly conflicted about giving blood due to the fact that he was asking to talk to his attorney, it would be the defense's argument that due to the totality of the circumstances that Mr. Bledsoe was compelled to give blood and he did not do so freely and voluntarily. And so for that reason, Your Honor, we would ask for the blood test to be suppressed as well. All right, state. Your Honor, the state argument is the state asked the court to deny um, defense motion. Um, the first argument with respect to the field test, um, the implied consent. Um, Your Honor, the state will argue um, Selena v. Texas, which is a persuasive case in this scenario. Um, the Fifth Amendment um, is a right that um, is offered to any um, defendant um, upon uh, custodial, custodial interrogation. And um, it's now self-serving. In this case, if defendant didn't want to go ahead with the test, the defendant should have affirmatively um, requested his attorney or refused to take the test. And as the, um, the, the video indicated, um, later on when the defendant didn't want to uh, proceed with the blood test, defendant indicated it. And um, you know, the state will further um, cite um, Bond v. State, which is a Georgia Court of Appeals case, which um, would usually consider the totality of the circumstances, um, given the age, um, the intellectual education deficiency of the defendant, um, the fiscal um, condition of the defendant, how long defendant was questioned in this scenario. Your Honor, the defendant is 49 years old. Um, defendant didn't indicate that he didn't understand any of the questions that Officer Woods um, um, questioned him. Um, defendant um, affirmatively agreed to um, taking the turn, turn around test as well as the H, HGN test as well. Um, Your Honor, given that defendant didn't assert his right um, to reject the test, um, Your Honor, the, the, the state requests that um, defendant fail to meet um, his burden with respect to suppressing the field, field test um, the implied field test. Your Honor, the state argument with respect to the statement that was uh, Officer Ward made to um, defendant um, during the custodial process in the jail. Um, Your Honor, the state would cite every, every mistake. Um, in this case, uh, an officer, officer Ward indicated that it takes two hours for um, defendant to be processed in order to get a phone to make a call. Um, Your Honor, in, in this case, in Humphrey v. State, um, the case stands for the, um, the fact that officer statement that was made to defendant um, wasn't deceptively misleading or inaccurate. Um, even though the officer indicated that it would take a long process um, to release uh, to, to release defendant, to release a result of her uh, defendant her, her refusal um, to attest. Yona, in this case, um, if, it's my understanding the officer was told the defendant that um, after taking the test, he will be released. My understanding is there's a process um, that requires the defendant to be released. Um, the 
according to the procedure the um of, of the the jail couldn't afford um mr mr blesso to make a call to his attorney at the time but then that is the st that that statement was um procedural in in the jail um and not necessarily misleading the defendant um with in, in regards to having to wait to speak to his attorney your honor that is the state argument um uh, with respect to defendant's motion um to um suppress the test um the failed test as well as the implied um consent um test and the and the blood draw um you know the, the state would ask that the court should deny defendant's motion to suppress um because defendant failed to meet it burden i almost never do this but i'm going to announce my decision now and you'll get a, a written copy so um having heard the testimony um presented through the officer my concern was heightened at the point where we started discussing field sobriety exercises so i listened and um i listened through hgn and you know, had a little bit of concern about how that was stated um, and brought up about how the HGN was presented to defendant in this case. However, my concern was heightened when we got to the walk and turn and the one leg stand because um, the conversation um, basically uh, was based on the officer's requirement to take the to uh, conduct field sobriety exercises um, if there is a, a, a possibility of impairment or if the officer has indicators that would lead them to want to make sure that the person is not impaired. So that to me um under uh the george constitution article 16 um which is uh, similar to uh the um united states constitution the fifth amendment um it's to prevent individuals from taking actions that are um that would result in uh, their presenting evidence against themselves. And in this case, um, the way it was presented, the fields were not voluntary as is the current state of the law, but um, he was encouraged to take the field sobriety test because it was a requirement that the officer conduct such tests. Um, and that was the way I have required, quote unquote. Um, and then there was also a, a coercive hypothetical uh, which in and of itself might not have been a problem, um, but with the officer stating that they were required to give the fields in a situation where they believed that there was a possible in, um, uh, uh, intoxication um, and driving with um, impairment, then that to me took away Mr. Uh, Bledsoe's um, ability to voluntarily consent to the field sobriety exam, uh, ex exercises of walk and turn and uh, one leg stand. In addition to that, the conversation um, which continued into the jail. Now, I wasn't real clear on where the implied consent conversation started because it didn't seem to start at the jail, probably started at the time of arrest at the scene. However, we're still at the point where we're discussing implied consent and going back and forth with Mr. Bledsoe in an orange jumpsuit and sitting at the table. And the concern that I have is uh, the question um, generally, when an officer has any questions about implied consent, all they do is reread the implied consent, which is um, applicable to the person's age. Um, and in this case, um, Officer Ward went further than that and began to answer questions. Um, and so even in rereading implied consent, which is minimally what is done, then Officer Ward asked questions. Uh, if I take the blood test, will my license be returned? Yes, your license will be returned. If you take the, but it is a requirement that if you don't take the test, then your license is going to be suspended. Um, okay, part of that is what's part of implied consent. But if somebody asks you if, uh, if I'm going to take the blood test, if you go so far as to tell them that, yeah, your license will be returned if you take the test, then that's not what implied consent says. In addition to that, um the the question of uh will i go home if i take the blood test well yeah everybody knows eventually he'll go home uh dui is usually not a um 
a situation where the death penalty is imposed. So at some point he's going to go home from the jail. But to the in the context of if I take the blood test, then will it result in me going home? That is coercive. Um, he also requested an attorney multiple times. Um, and once he requests an attorney, um, any questioning is supposed to stop at that point. But the officer continues to question him about whether he's willing to take the um, test, um, the blood draw under implied consent. And um, so for all of those factors, the court is going to grant the motion to suppress the um, walk and turn, the one leg stand and the blood test. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, and the reason I announced it is because one, it was clear, um, and two, you all may get to work on resolving this case um, short of trial if that's what it takes. But um, I didn't want this dragging on. All right, thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Nothing from the defense, Nothing, Your Honor. Nothing from the state, Your Honor. All right.